Hi guys, uh, Dr. Rob Barrington here with some more um, nutrition advice. I'd like to talk today about the um, Western diet and how it differs particularly from traditional diets. Um, I think the first place to start would be an explanation of what is meant by the term a typical Western diet. Well, the Western diet is the food consumed by people living in Western Europe, uh, people living in North America and people living in Australia. Um, the diet that these people uh, consume is characterized by the consumption of too many processed and refined foods and in particular the diet contains high amounts of refined carbohydrates, it contains high amounts of sugar, it contains high amounts of processed animal proteins and it contains high amounts of refined polyunsaturated oils. Now it's known that overconsumption of these refined and processed foods in the Western diet causes metabolic dysfunction. And this metabolic dysfunction develops for two main reasons. Firstly, um, the refined and processed foods in the diet contain metabolic poisons. Um, we know, for example, that fructose, trans fatty acids, and also some chemical additives within the Western diet are metabolic poisons. Um, these chemicals tend to interfere with metabolic pathways and they cause shifts in normal metabolic regulation. Uh, another reason that the Western foods cause metabolic dysfunction is because generally they are missing high enough concentrations of vitamins and minerals required for correct metabolic activity. And there is a third reason why Western foods can cause um, metabolic dysfunction and this relates to their lack of fiber which uh, causes blood sugar problems. Now the combination of these three factors um, are primary drivers of Western lifestyle diseases. So we have metabolic poisons, we have a lack of vitamins and minerals and we have a lack of fiber and this leads to disease. In fact, what we find is that those people consuming the typical Western diet now gain weight, they develop type 2 diabetes, they develop obesity, they develop cardiovascular disease, and they also develop cancer. Um, so while consumption of the Western diets associated with disease, if we look at the traditional diets, we find that traditional diets are actually associated with health and longevity. So maybe it's a good point now to discuss what is a traditional diet and how does it differ from the typical Western diet. Well, a traditional diet is the diet that is historically associated with a population before they adopt what we call the modern Western diet. Traditional diets uh, in the literature that have been studied include the Okinawan diet, the Norwegian diet, the Hunzen diet, the Maasai diet, and also the Australian Aborigine diet. However, perhaps the most um, well-known diet in the nutritional literature that is classed as a traditional diet is the Mediterranean diet. Um, if we look at populations around the world who still consume traditional diets and look at the historic records from those countries, we see that these populations do not develop the same lifestyle diseases that we find in developed countries in the West. Um, in fact, studies on uh, mountain regions of Sicily where the populations consume a traditional Mediterranean diet have actually shown that the elderly show none of the age-related decline in physiology seen in Western populations. This area of Sicily also has a six-fold higher number of centenarians compared with the national average. Um, and the inference from this is that they are protected by their Mediterranean diet. Now, all traditional diets appear to be beneficial despite containing quite different foods, which is worthy of discussion. For example, some are high in fat, some are high in carbohydrates, some have lots of plant foods, whereas some, has lo some have lots of animal foods. However, they do have, generally, when you study them, three things in common that seems to make them effective at preventing Western lifestyle diseases. The first thing they have in common is that they don't contain processed and refined foods. The second thing they have in common is that the traditional diets are absent of the metabolic poisons we mentioned earlier. The third thing that make tradition, uh, makes traditional diets um, protective of disease is likely the fact that they contain enough vitamins and minerals for correct metabolic activity. 
Um, studies of populations that have uh, abandoned their traditional eating practices and adopted um, Western style foods um, have shown that those populations do develop um, Western diseases. Um, however, it is known that this process can be stopped and also reversed by returning to traditional eating patterns through consumption of traditional style diets. Um, in this regard, uh, the Mediterranean diet is probably the one that's been most studied in the um, nutritional literature um, and adopting the uh, traditional Mediterranean diet does show that it is protective of disease. Um, studies that have been done on the Mediterranean diet generally show a number of things. Um, firstly, the people on uh, the studies who adopt this diet tend to lose um, belly fat uh, around the abdomen. Uh, this type of fat is indicative of metabolic dysfunction and therefore from this we can assume that the Mediterranean diet is actually um, reversing that metabolic dysfunction. The second thing that tends to happen is that the people on these diets tend to lose weight and they lose the weight without any energy restriction and without the need to perform any exercise. Uh, another thing that happens when people adopt a Mediterranean style diet is that they also become healthier. Um, biochemical parameters are measured on these people and they tend to reduce significantly their risk of developing particular diseases. So which diseases are they protected from? Well, it's no surprise that they're protected from typical Western lifestyle diseases such as type two diabetes, cancer, cardiovascular disease and obesity. Um, now, from studies looking at traditional diets, we can infer that traditional eating patterns actually reverse metabolic damage, um, and that metabolic damage is probably caused by consuming um, the typical Western diet. We can also infer from these studies that the reversal of the metabolic damage is likely that the, the reason that these people lose weight, and it's also likely the reason that these people are protected from disease. Now, what I would suggest is if, if you value your health and you also value your waistline, um, that if you are currently eating a typical Western diet, you abandon that diet and you switch to a more traditional eating pattern.